We're on location today at Purdue University. Boiler up. Hey Katrina, we decided we'd visit you on campus because we didn't get a chance when you got home to be able to talk about your summer. Yeah, so you just come barging in. Yeah, we're hovering like helicopter parents. That's all right, I'm glad to have you here. We've got a lot of questions recently about your summer and how it went. So I thought maybe it would be good for us to just to talk a few minutes about it. And maybe the best place to start would be just a brief reminder of what you were doing this summer and, and how you got the internship and all that. Yeah, so I was a part of the Land O'Lakes Global Food Challenge, which is a 12 week internship. Um, they picked 10 college sophomores from across the country so at the time I was a sophomore, I'm now a junior. Um, we study all sorts of different things and that's kind of the point. So I was an ag econ and plant genetics majors. We had an international affairs major. We had industrial engineering, lots of ag business, all sorts of stuff. Um, and then the goal of the program is to see the entirety of agriculture. So we got to go to Malawi and South Africa for two weeks to talk about development um, and subsistence farming and really small scale agriculture. Um, and then we went to D.C. to talk about ag policy. Uh, and then I spent a week in Iowa at a co-op learning about American agriculture. Um, and along the way, we also went to some dairy farms. And I got to work at Land O'Lakes headquarters. Um, so I really feel like I got a good overview of the ag industry as a whole. So that was a three-year plan that you just went through? A uh, three-month plan. No kidding. You did all of that in 12 weeks. That's, that's amazing. So maybe we ought to slow down and go through that in a little more detail. So. You left here in early May and you went in Land of Lakes. How, what did you do to start with? So I worked on a group project with four of the 10 um, emerging leaders that they called us. So I was one of the four. Um, we worked on looking at how people talk about ag tech tools. So I worked with the field forecasting tool, um, working on how can we um, tell people about the tool basically and make sure that farmers are aware of its benefits, what it's about, so my project was kind of more marketing focused. Um, got to learn a lot about communications, marketing, and ag technology, which I had never worked with before. Just really fascinating. Oh, okay, okay. So you, you did that kind of up front. You started on your project, and then you had to you had to set that aside for a little while because right. you had a pretty big trip. Right. So then we went to Malawi in South Africa. We started in Malawi. We saw a one cow dairy farm. We saw um, some market, some co-ops in Africa, um, just really small scale farming. And then throughout the trip, we moved to larger and larger operations as we went. Okay. So you were in Malawi for a week. Uh, four days. Four days. And then, and so you got to see this, the smallest farm mm -hmm. and then you got bigger ones as you went. Yeah. And then once you got finished with your four days in Malawi. Then we went to South Africa. Um, we got to see a group that's really helping educate um, poor farmers about how they can improve their operations. Um, we saw some ag machinery there, um, and we ended our trip by following apples from the apple tree all the way to the processing plant, and then we got on the ship that's gonna take them to Europe and the US. Oh, really? Yeah. So we got to see um, the people that inspect um, the food that's coming to the US. Um, and see how the ship had all of its refrigeration set up. It's really fascinating. Yeah, that is fascinating. Okay, so you got finished in South Africa. You came back to Minnesota, right? Yep, came back for a week. Um, tried to go back to working on that project. I had to go to Andrea and Jake's wedding. Oh yeah, we talked a little about Andrea and Jake's wedding on our video before. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you were there. We actually got to see you during the summer there. Mm -hmm. That was good. That was good. But then as soon as you got finished with the wedding, I flew off to D.C. So we asked the question earlier whether you were going to drain the swamp or be a part of the swamp. Mm -hmm. So how was it? You know, I'm not sure the swamp is as bad as it sounds. So um, we had an opportunity to go talk to our congressmen and representatives while we were in D.C. and just kind of talk about like what's going on in agriculture, um, kind of be lobbyists for a day. Senator Young met with me. He's a senator from Indiana. Shook my hand, was more than happy to hear what we had to say, and we found that was the norm. Uh, did you have like a $20 bill in your hand? I did you? not. I did not. I was very impressed with how willing my representatives were to talk to me about agriculture. thought that Washington wouldn't work as well as it ended up working. 
I'm afraid that means she's part of the swamp. I think the swamp gets a bad reputation. I got a, I got a capital tour, private capital tour from a, a representative from Minnesota. And he is, he is very, very much on the conservative side. While he was taking us around, uh, we got to see the U.S. House of Representatives chamber. Wow. Um, got to sit in the front row where all the important people sit during the State of the Union speech. That's cool. Um, and he told us that he really has faith that, that Washington still works. And really emphasized that um, the things that we hear in the news are, are kind of exaggerations sometimes. And... You know, he's talking about the friends he has that are staunch liberals. They have their sides, but at the end of the day, in Washington, they are working together. You know, and I think that's, that's a good key point. Uh, we have to learn to work with each other. The only way we're going to solve problems as a nation is to work together and solve them. It seems like uh, so many folks are just trying to divide, and it doesn't really matter what your politics are. It seems left or right or up or down, it seems like a, a lot of folks have more motivation to divide rather than to actually work together to solve problems. And you didn't see that. One of the things I, I love most about agriculture is how nonpartisan it is though. Oh. Because every single district in the United States has an ag interest. Every senator has a large constituency that is in agriculture and everyone wants people to eat. There's yeah. not a single person ever that doesn't want people to eat. Right. So I find that agriculture is is a very easy place to get stuff done and while we were there we heard the same thing um, that especially in ag the people in Washington that work on ag policy are a very tight-knit group and it doesn't really matter whether you're liberal or conservative everybody has agriculture's best interest in mind. So you got finished in Washington DC mm -hmm. then what? Then I went to Iowa for a week. Okay. Um, I went to a co-op. Were you campaigning for president is that what you were doing? Not yet. Oh! I, <laughs> Um, I got to see uh, several different types of ag that I had never seen before. So saw a pretty large scale dairy farm. It was called Cinnamon Ridge um, and the cows were uh, cinnamon colored. So I think they make cinnamon milk. We were asking before you left what you really wanted to accomplish and you said you wanted to milk a cow. I did say I wanted to milk a cow. Did you succeed or fail? I failed. Failed to milk a cow or you failed to get the opportunity well, to I was instructed. I, I, I learned this summer that nobody milks cows anymore. The cool kids have robots. Okay. So they have these, these really cool milking machine things that like the cow walks in to the, the milky thing and it has um, some like molasses candy. I don't know. Whatever cows think is really tasty. <laughs> the robot feels the cow walk in. Then it has some lasers and it like finds the cow udder and it like precisely goes like and then like milks the cow and then when the cow's out of milk the robot knows to stop milking the cow and opens the front gate and the cow walks right out. I thought the most fascinating part about this was that the cow knows when it needs to be milked and when its udder gets so full it's, it's painful for the cow and at any time of the day it can be milked. Isn't there a way to identify which cow walks is walking into the stall at any yeah. given time? Yeah, so cows kind of have barcodes in a way, um, which like the, the robot knows, hey, cow number 651 um, is being milked. This is its antibiotic history. Um, so say that the, the cow was sick two weeks ago and had an antibiotic that had a 21 day um, period of lasting in the cow's body. Then the robot, the robot will automatically discard the milk. Okay. So, um, because of that, there's essentially no chance that antibiotics could end up in our milk supply. And then also, um, even on the cows that are supposedly antibiotic free, every milking is uh, tested for antibiotics. So, okay. the whole hormone free milk thing, all milk is hormone free. There's no way hormones or antibiotics or any of that stuff can get in the milk supply. It's tested right from the cow. Wow. So it sounds like that trip was really educational for you, just on a lot of fronts. Yeah, I never knew anything about animal agriculture. Uh, anything else you want to share? What was your favorite part? DC week. I knew that. We're in trouble, Christy. Yep. I was really fascinated by how um, everyone worked together. No one has the answers necessarily to what policy should be or, um, you know, what direction the country should move in. 
but at least in agriculture, I saw a lot of hope for listening to farmers, listening to the people that it directly affects, and then using that to create policy. So that's what Land Lakes does in DC, essentially, is help um, Congress people uh, understand what's going on in the dairy industry specifically. So this summer really was was pretty special. Land Lakes made it really special for you, didn't they? Yeah, absolutely incredible. The the whole entirety of Lando Lakes is set up in a way that allowed us to experience agriculture like this. So they have obviously Lando Lakes butter, which I've got a whole bunch of that in my freezer. Well, no, fridge. Uh, and um, they also have Winfield United, the crop group, and then Purina, uh, Animal Nutrition, and then Sustain, their sustainability group. Um, so I got to experience truly the, the entirety of agriculture, um, which I couldn't have done anywhere else. And I'm incredibly thankful for the experience and the opportunities it'll bring in the future. Okay, that's really cool. So now you're back at Purdue. Mm -hmm. Have you had any change in direction or anything like that because of your experience? Yeah, so I was um, a plant genetics major. Uh, in the spring of last year, I added agricultural economics. Um, and then this semester, I'm really leaning into that ag econ side. So I'm taking a lot of math, a lot of economic theory, um, some political science, um, I know, I know. But as far as grad school goes, I've got a lot to decide on yet, and I'm trying to keep my options as open as possible. Uh, I've got several thoughts as far as maybe econ, considering maybe law school, maybe something in policy. I don't really know yet, but I'm trying to give myself a really good foundation to be able to go into any of those paths. Well, thanks for taking some time to talk with us tonight. Oh, thanks for coming up. I know this is, uh, you know, you're so busy here that you don't have time for dear old mom and dad anymore, but. Yeah, I got Calc homework due at 11. Oh my goodness. Hey, the girl on the driver's tractor. Right. <laughs> Woo! Chloe, <laughs> get your butt up here. <laughs> So, uh, Chloe, Maddie, and I went to the uh, Indianapolis Children's Museum today, and um, we needed dinner, so I called Mom, and she said she would make us dinner, and while we're here, we've got to let Chloe and Maddie drive Johnny. Your very first appearance on Tractor Time with Tim. Hey! <laughs> Maddie, have you ever driven a tractor before? No. <laughs> Closest I've come is a lawnmower. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, this kind of is a lawnmower, so that's... <laughs> kind of overgrown. Yeah. So what do you think? You need Johnny? My dad would love it. Uh-huh. Yeah. So your dad's a Tractor Time with Tim viewer, right? Yeah. Say hi, Dad. Hello. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Check out our website, TractorTimeWithTim.com. And we'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time, Time with, with Tim. Tim. Dad, does Illinois have something that you can climb in like this? Illinois has the alma mater. She stands there like this. That doesn't seem near as cool. Mm -hmm. no. Oh well. Illinois doesn't have many astronauts either. 150 years of giant leaps. That's the year's theme. It's pretty cool. <laughs> My room is space themed because, you know, astronauts. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha